is and I just needed somebody to talk to really um I don't think anybody will realize that the people that have seen this and have worked with it are completely traumatized by what they're seeing um and will be for a long time sorry I've got to read what I've got as well um I'm not looking for sympathy over it at all but it's real so I mean you know that I've been talking for a long time about what's happened to the elderly people in care and I started first making comments about this on Facebook in June and I didn't really think that people were listening so I made a live video um, on the 30th of June um, I think it was or the 1st of July and um, I put it out and it's had 100,000 views so I know that people appreciate the message and want to hear about this and it means something to them and I've also acquired 3,000 followers and I'm I'm just you know I'm a nobody um, and I'm just somebody that wants to tell people what is happening so I've been lucky enough since then to have interviews and be able to speak about what is happening to raise issues on to raise awareness sorry on this issue and I hope the message is reaching out and getting out to some people um, and that they know that they're not alone for a start. Whistleblowers have come forward and I'm collecting their stories and I'm collecting the stories of the family so that they, the families that this has happened to, so that when there is a reckoning and there will be, that I have got that information to be able to pass on to people. So today what has happened is I had a whistleblower contact me who I've spoken to I've verified this person they are a real person they're not a nutter or some conspiracy theorist people get like to say that we're conspiracy theorists this person is not they're a real person they are working in a home they've given me their full name they have given me the name of the home I'm not yet going to release that to, to you guys publicly because there's a process that we're going through but that person has agreed that I can read out what they sent me and I want you all to know that this is the truth of what is happening so I'm just going to read her email really and then um, you can tell me what you sorry what you think so she said hi Claire thank you for the reply oh, I'm seeing my manager again tomorrow and I'm telling her that this will be my last complaint before going to the CQC which is the Care Quality Commission but again I'm not sure how responsive it, they will be. They don't seem to care. I'm worried that it's my word against all the GPs, the district, district nurses and the other carer, carers. What I have to say is that they have put all our residents on do not resuscitate orders and all of these residents with variable or lack of capacity are on anticipatory care pathways, which means that they are not allowed to go to hospital for any treatment for anything and they aren't to receive any antibiotics for anything whatsoever whatever illness they've got since this pandemic in inverted commas started we haven't had a single gp visit the patients at our home when any whenever anyone gets ill and this is ill not related to covid because we haven't got it in my care home they automatically put them on end of life this is now what really gets me, a nil by mouth. And they discontinue all their medication because they say they're at risk of aspiration, which is ridiculous. Sorry. Which is ridiculous. Because if they eat, drink or have medication, there is a small chance that they could aspirate. But if they're nil by mouth, then they will die from dehydration and starvation. Myself and another carer on night have had to resort to buying jars of pureed baby food and feeding the residents and giving them drinks after making them aware of the risk of aspiration and getting their consent just so that they can have food and drink. Sorry. Along with this, 
the GPs are remotely prescribing end of life medication, which is morphine and modazolam injections, and these are being misused. They, all our clients have had their usual medication taken away, which is regular pain relief such as paracetamol and, cocode, uh, and codeine, sorry, and all their anxiety, antidepressant and antipsychotic medication, which a lot of our clients are on. The district nurses then come into the home to give end of life drugs because with the withdrawal of usual medication, the resident is showing signs of pain and anxiety, which of course they would. The morphine should only be used for extreme pain when nothing else helps. And this knocks the individuals out. And especially when they're not eating and drinking and losing weight. This means it's even harder to get any fluids in them. The midazolam is given at end of life for sedation and terminal restlessness and agitation. However, this suppresses the individual's breathing and quickens along their death. No other alternatives of pain relief are given. There's no pain patches, no liquid paracetamol. They just put them straight onto the hard stuff, which once started is only a matter of days before that resident passes away. However, this has all been okayed by the doctors and the nurses. And as the need for analgesia is subjective, I don't know how much evidence I can find, or even if I will be believed. But I have collected evidence of fluid charts. I've worked in this home for over two years, and I have never seen anything like this when it comes to end of life and just writing people off. I believe it's a human right to have right to life, and they are committing euthanasia. So much for them protecting the vulnerable. So I've had to phone up this person and speak to them and say to them, A, that I think that they're really brave for trusting me to tell me the story. I absolutely wanted to go to the police straight away. I was going to get in my car and drive to where the home is and go and and get the police but I don't even trust that they will do anything. I feel so powerless to get anybody to look at this and I've had to tell this person don't go to the CQC. If you do, they will bury it. They will bury it, they will cover up the evidence and you will lose your job and there will be nobody going in and feeding these people with the pureed baby food that you are feeding them to keep them alive. And just in case anybody thinks that this is normal and what you do to people on an end of life pathway, it is not. The Liverpool pathway was disbanded and I think it was in 2014 because it was it might even have been before then. And yes, you have a right to refuse life sustaining treatment, but that is has to come from you and if you can't consent to that because you haven't got capacity then that has to be made at a best interest meeting and that decision has to be documented and it has to be taken in appropriate ways which I know isn't being done and even then you are not allowed to take away somebody's hydration and somebody's pain medication you are not allowed to that is illegal that is wrong and these doctors and these nurses and these care home staff that are just doing it and aren't speaking out are nothing more than complicit to killing people, to murdering people. And this is really what is going on. This is really what is happening. This is why people are dying and the numbers are high. They, None of them have got COVID. None of them. The, the, the person I spoke to said to me they have been, she can put her hand on her heart and say that two of those people in her home have been murdered. And there's a third that she thinks has, but they, she, th there's other issues that they could question. And she, 
gave me an example and said to me that one of the the, the people in the home got a chest infection um, during lockdown and they basically got to, taken to hospital and they actually got treated, can't believe it, and the chest infection cleared up. So when they went to hospital, they had a COVID test and it was negative. And then they were discharged because the chest infection cleared up and they had another test and it was negative. And when they got the discharge notes back at the home, it said on it that the person had coronavirus by exposure, despite the two negative tests and that all usual medication should be removed and that this person should be put on end of life. This person never had a chance. They didn't have capacity for a start. I would like to see the best interest decision that was made. I would like to see the, the deprivation of liberty orders that these homes have got in place for people that they're locking up and, they, and that haven't got capacity because you, you just, you can't do that. You have to get a doll's order and the court has to give that. And that, you can't get anything from the court. I know that because I know what's going on. So I know that they're not doing this. And it's just murder. It's just killing people. And it's it's happening. If this is happening in this one small home, and you know what I've been telling you has been happening in my homes. But what has really finished me off today is having to feed these people with baby food. There's one other person at that home that this person works with that is trying to, that is trying to speak out. And yes, the LCP was rebranded, but as I've said, you are not allowed to take away somebody's hydration and pain medication. You can't do that. That's illegal. And anybody, anybody that has got a relative in a care home at this time, please please, I implore you, if you are able to, go and take your relative out of it. Go and take your relative out of it. I know that many of the staff are perhaps doing the best that they can. I'm sure that they are, but you cannot go along with this. This person that's come out today, it just does not know where to turn to get the people the help that they need. And she is scared about losing her job because if she goes, there is nobody to feed these people and they are just going to starve to death. I want the families of these people. I I said, do the families know? We don't even know what's been put on the death certificates because she said that she, she hasn't seen the death certificates. So we can't be sure what's on there. It'd be interesting to see if coronavirus is on there, wouldn't it, when they haven't got it in the home and we know what's happened. But I'm sure the families don't think anything of it because guess what? There's nobody going in. I mean, there are some visits allowed at this home, she said, um, for when people are dying and things, but they don't know what's happening. They're not being told. They're not being told. So it's really important that people like me, I don't care. I don't care anymore about my job. I don't. I really don't. I'm ashamed to be in my profession because more of us aren't speaking up. And I'm so sorry to everybody that we're not. I so am. Um, and I just... I don't care anymore. I don't care if I get struck off. I don't, when you've got nothing to fear, you've got nothing to lose. And this is a story that needs to be told and, and something needs to be done about this. Um, I've put this particular person in touch with Eileen Chubb of Compassion in Care and I'm hoping that Eileen will be able to work with this person to give them whistleblower status to protect that person's job because they are a decent human being that is trying to save people and stop this. And I would just ask you, please, I'm sorry about the crying. I know that it's awful and I shouldn't be upset when I come on camera. Please share this video. Please, please make everybody aware of what is happening. I, I am just begging you to get this out there. The more people that find out about it, the more people maybe that stand up, the more people that then say no, enough is enough and that justice can be bought for those people and justice can be served on those people that are doing this. And I am saying to all of you, doctors and nurses, 
all of you, any of you that is complicit in this, I am coming for you. I am. We are. And that's it. That's all I've got to say, guys, tonight. I, I just really am so upset and I wanted... I wanted to tell you all, and I'm sorry for being upset, and please share this video, please make sure everybody knows, and please, if you've got your own relatives in care and you can, please go and take them out of it, please go and take them out of wherever they are, and I'll speak to you all soon, thank you.